pretty well. Well, if you thought that woman knew animals, you ain't seen nothing yet. Jim Wilkerson talked with a woman two hours ago who talks to the animals. She would have known She knew dogs pretty well. Well, if you thought that woman knew animals, you ain't seen nothing yet. Jim Wilkerson talked with a woman two hours ago who talks to the animals. She would have known exactly what that little pooch in the snow was Yeah, she would have said it if speed was cold. He would, <laughs> he would have told her, and she would have said, hey, well, let's go and get some booties on. You know, I, this is serious. I'm, this is Twilight Zone stuff here. But let me tell you in advance that the zoo has used this woman to communicate with their animals. And it's all she does for a living. She's been doing it for 16 years. So if she weren't good at it, she wouldn't be getting these new customers. So it look, looks like something is really going on here. Scout is a search and rescue dog, but he just wasn't getting it as quickly as his owner wanted. He was easily distracted. He wasn't highly motivated. He just wasn't quite ready for his big state testing. So she called Samantha Curry, who talked to Scout and found that the dog really didn't like leaving Lynn's sight during a search. So she sent him mental pictures for him to go as far and as fast as he could. And he'd stop and act confused. And I told him, just sniff the air wait a minute, he would pick up the scent and then follow that scent, and that's all. That's all I did, and he passed his test with flying color. In fact, he's now had two fines. I hope he was another search dog candidate. But he is happening when the results are so real. Jim Wilkerson has more on this incredible woman in a Nightcast Extra. Yeah, you know, Carol, you know, well, you pet owners with problem pets, you might want to try what our pet psychic is offering. Hey, what have you got to lose? I mean, the dog's eating the couch, right? Here's a lady who had a major problem with her dog, and the results were absolutely amazing. Every time I left her alone, no one could calm her down, and she would howl and scream and just be really desperate. My husband would be at home, and, and he couldn't calm her down. My daughter just gave up. She would go upstairs in the hallway and just howl and howl and howl. She's talking about Gracie, her four-year-old basset hound, who's been crying in Pam's absence almost all her life. Some friends recommended pet psychic Samantha Curry because she'd worked wonders changing their pet's behaviors. So Samantha says she started communicating with Gracie. She sends strong mental pictures and receives splashes of pictures and thoughts from Gracie. What thoughts? Just the feeling is total panic that the ground will automatically disappear. Then she went over her notes with Pam. As long as she sees you, there's ground there. But the minute you disappear, the ground will just disappear. You make the ground. Put me away, the dog thinks you're God. <laughs> then Pam explained that when the dog first came home, just a puppy, it walked off the porch and fell. And Pam picked her up and comforted her. But that fall gave Gracie a false impression. Every time that Pam would disappear, the belief system is panic, the ground will go, I don't know where to walk because it will just disappear. The treatment, she says, was simple. She sent mental pictures of Gracie to watch where she was going. Visualizing the dog walking along, her little short legs going along, and as long as she's watching the ground, she can see that it's there. That's all I did. One session, 45 minutes, after which Pam left the house, and Gracie never let out a peep. I'm just blown away by this. <laughs> she doesn't cry now when I leave. It's just so nice. But here's an interesting sidelight to that story. After I was done with Gracie, she gave me this picture, in, of, and she did it physically. She said that she is part of this business that she should have this paintbrush in her mouth and that she should pose. And she put her head up and held it. So she told Pam what Gracie had said and learned for the first time that indeed, Pam is an animal illustrator and she uses Gracie as her main model, holding a brush in her mouth. Samantha says if you want to change your pet's behavior, think in strong, vivid, positive images of the behavior you want the animal to perform. The cat box, for example. Check your attitude about the cat box. If you feel like I hate cleaning a cat box, then pretty soon the cat's going to pick up. This isn't a cool place to go, and they'll stop going there. Instead, visualize how great that litter box is when it's wet and gunky. 
And she says the key is transmitting a strong, detailed mental picture of the positive behavior. Don't think about what you don't want the dog to do, but what you want it to do. And her stories of uh, some of her communications with animals are absolutely fascinating. And I've heard a lot of them, and I've talked to some people that are clients of hers. Seems like she did something with that basset hound with separation anxiety. Are you buying it? Uh, well, I think she's uh, sensing something, and apparently you know, the wild animal park has used her with an elephant that they had problems with, and a lot of people are using her. And, uh, and the fact, she tells me now that other people, that she has a sensitivity and people are learning about her, other people are coming forward saying, you know, I've noticed that too. Incredible. You might remember Dr. Do 